It's 2017, and I need to test some new podcast tools. So I launch a show that needs no prep work called the Podcast Rodeo Show, where I grab a random podcast and see how long I can hang on. I plan on doing it about a month, and after a few episodes, I'm really not sure this fits my brand. I mean, I've always been the the fun, helpful podcast coach that inspires you to plan, launch, and grow your podcast. And here I was, just kind of peeing in everyone's Cheerios. It seemed kind of mean, and I was like, is this part of my brand? I mean, who's going to hire me as a coach when all I'm doing is saying, that's not good, that's not good, that's not good. But over the years, I've received emails like the one I got last week. You reviewed my podcast a couple months back, and I was contacted by my sister who heard your review, and she called me upset saying, this guy's online bashing your podcast. And then a second call came in from a supporter feeling, well, the same way. I eventually listened to your review, and I pushed my emotions to the side, did some research on you, and accepted the constructive criticism and realized you are the help that I need. And that podcast that was supposed to last a month just finished episode 400. And today, we're going to talk about personal branding, what it is, and how you can help shape what people say about you when you're not in the room. Hit it, ladies! The School of Podcasting with Dave Jackson. Podcasting since 2005, I am your award-winning Hall of Fame podcast coach, Dave Jackson, thanking you so much for tuning in. This is where I help you plan, launch, grow, and monetize your podcast. My website is schoolofpodcasting.com. Use the coupon code LISTENER, that's L-I-S-T-E-N-E-R, when you sign up for either a monthly or yearly subscription. And don't forget, you can sign up worry-free. I got a 30-day money-back guarantee. So yeah, we're talking personal branding And who knows, maybe it was your brand that you didn't know much about when you started because I'm doing the question of the month. If you are new to the show, I do this where the last episode of the month will be your feedback on this question. Well, what is the question? And that is, what do you wish you knew when you first started podcasting? Now, when you do this, be sure to mention your podcast and your website. So if I were to do this, it might sound like something like, I don't know. Hey, this is Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting, where I help you plan, launch, and grow your podcast at schoolofpodcasting.com. The thing I wish I knew when I first started is, and then you fill in whatever that is, I need your answer by March 26, 2021. You can answer this by going to schoolofpodcasting.com slash question. Now, I know you might be thinking, oh, personal branding, because, like, I'm not a business. Like, what do I need? No, here's the thing. If you have one subscriber, if you have one listener, guess what? You're a brand. Yeah, I know. You didn't even want it. Congratulations. You're a brand. And what you say, what you do, how you do it, it all reflects on you. I actually just put out an article in the podcast business journal. And it says, Hey, quit blaming your guests for bad audio. Cause uh, yeah, it's your brand and you're the person that let that bad audio onto your show. And I know it's a little harsh when I say stuff like that, but uh, you know, it's kind of um, true. So I was doing some research on how I could make the ultimate podcast education website that's going to be School of Podcasting 2.0. And in reality, it's more like 3.6 or something like that. And uh, reached out to my audience. And one of the people I met was Andrea Wojnicki from TalkAboutTalk.com. And here's what's interesting. She has not one, not two, but three different Uh, degrees in marketing. And I listened to an episode of hers. And if you've ever thought about how do I establish my credibility? Now, I just puke mine at the beginning, right? Uh, Award-winning Hall of Fame podcast consultant, blah, 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 right? Here's some clips from Andrea's show. She's going to tell you about an episode. I have links to it in the show notes. But here is how, listen to how just subtle this is. I vividly recall being a keen young brand manager at Craft Canada. I was excited and horrified 
to have the opportunity to formally present my brand plan at the annual national sales meeting. What do we get? Brand manager talking on a national stage. When I was a doctoral student, I used to stand up in my office and practice my academic presentations facing a blank wall. There's a lot of great storytelling and a lot of great vulnerability in the episode I'm going to be sending you to, but that clip right there uh, makes me think if that's an old story, I probably should have referred to her as Dr. Andrea. Here's another one. So I scheduled a pep talk for the day of the event with my friend Angie, who also happens to be an executive coach. Now, the first time I heard this walking around the neighborhood, when she said who also happened to be, I thought she was pointing out that like me who is an executive coach. And I'm not sure if she meant it that way or if she just meant, hey, it's my friend. Oh, and she happens to be an executive coach. But in my head, she was saying, I'm an executive coach. And so is my friend Angie. So without further ado, here is Andrea from the Talk About Talk podcast. You can find her at talkabouttalk.com. Show notes are out at schoolofpodcasting.com slash 765. Andrea, Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me, Dave. I have to say, honestly, it is such a privilege. I've been listening for two years and you really, really helped me hone my craft. And so many of the things that I say, have you ever heard this? Have you ever heard that? They come from you. So I'm so grateful for that. And it really is a privilege to now be a guest on your show. Well, thank you very much. I mean, and. One of the things that that we kind of got on when we were just talking was the subject of personal branding and what actually is a, a personal brand. So when people think about personal branding, a lot of people think about social media influencers, right? Or entrepreneurs who are their brand. But we all have a personal brand and you can think of it very simply as your identity or your reputation. And the definition that I love to use that really seems to resonate with people is that your personal brand is what others think and say about you when you're not in the room. Which is kind of spooky. (laughs) Well, in a way, it can be. And the analogy that I like to use is it's kind of similar to your credit score or your credit rating, because Mm -hmm. we all have a credit score whether we choose to strategically manage it or not, and other people can access it, and we can influence it. You know, we can improve our credit score if we work on our credit rating. And I would say all of those things also apply to your personal brand. It exists whether you choose to strategically manage it or not. Other people know what your personal brand is. So you can ignore it or you can choose to strategically manage it. Well, if we stick with the analogy of the credit score, there are some things that you just know are horrible to do to, and they just negatively affect your, your score. Are there things that we do that we are unaware that they are affecting our personal brand that maybe we should go, Hey, you know what? That's not going to help you a whole lot. Well, of course for podcasters, you can think of your personal brand as what your current listeners and also your potential listeners believe about you when they are exposed to you in any way. So your current listeners, it would be probably from listening to you, maybe from going to your website. So what do they believe about you, Dave, about the School of Podcasting and about Dave Jackson? It's also other potential future listeners who may stumble upon your website, or they may see your cover art as they're flipping through Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast player they're using. It it may be when somebody recommends you like, I often do when people say, Andrea, can you help me start my podcast? I said, you know, I can help you with the communication part. Dave Jackson's the podcasting guy. So that is you being represented and your personal brand is positive, right? Because you're being recommended. Your question though, about the sort of red lights, the things that we should be watching out for, you want your personal brand to be unique, positive, and meaningful to you. If you're copying other people, that's a red light. You want it to be unique. If you are communicating something negative, unless that is the reputation or the identity that you want, obviously that's not a good thing. And it has to be really and truly meaningful to you. I like to use the word resonate. It has to be something that resonates with you deeply. And there's one saying that I've heard is, it's better to be unique than it is to be better. 
Mm. So think about that for a minute. We all know what better looks like, but do we know what unique is? And in our hearts, we all know ourselves what our personal brand probably is. It's, you know, when someone gives you a compliment and you're, you light up because that compliment means more to you than just about anything that anyone could have said. That means that whatever they've been talking about is probably core to your identity or your personal brand, for example. If we don't know what people are saying, because we, we're not there when, you know, we, they leave the room and they go and talk about us. How do you then know what your personal brand is, I guess? Well, I like to coach my clients and, and actually my podcast listeners about two big meta steps here. The first step is creating or articulating your personal brand. And the second step is communicating it. So across what media? And, and I've, I've done some thinking about what that would look like specifically for podcasters. But back to the first step, you are creating or articulating your personal brand. I suggest, and it's actually fun, it's time consuming, and, and it really does require some deep analysis, but, but it is fun. It's enjoyable. Three exercises that I suggest. The first one is take out a blank sheet of paper and write down your thoughts about what you were, what differentiated you from your peers, maybe when you were seven or eight years old, what you are now, what compliments mean the most to you, what you and then what you aspire to be in the future, and maybe what you want your legacy to be. So really thinking about adjectives, about job titles, about personality traits that you would love to embody and that maybe that you do embody more than most people. So what differentiates you? So that's the first exercise is the blank sheet of paper. The second one is input from others. And I actually did this again recently. I emailed about eight people and I told them I'm doing a personal branding up exercise. I'm updating my personal brand. Can you please answer a few questions for me? The first question is, if you were introducing me to a team, to a work team that I was going to be joining and they had never met me before, what would you tell them about me? And the second question is, what makes Andrea, Andrea? And then the third question is, what do you admire about Andrea? So <laughs> you get these emails back, I'm telling you, it makes you feel so good. But then you start to internalize and think about what these people answered and you start to see themes. And the themes are the things that are truly embodying your personal brand. And these are the things that people believe differentiate you from other people. And then the third exercise is I recommend people try to take a couple of personality tests. So you could do the Myers-Briggs, you know, ENTJ, whatever your, your Myers-Briggs profile is. You could do the, the big five personality traits from social psychology. There's, there's a whole bunch of tests that you can do. There's archetypes. And really what you're looking for is traits where you are off the charts. So for me, I'm ESTJ. Okay, I'm going to jump in here. If you like the who of the what, E is stands for extroverted. S is sensing or observant. T is thinking or uh, tough-minded. And J is judging or scheduling. It's test results. So I'll have links out at schoolofpodcasting.com slash 765 if you want to take these tests. But to be honest, the STJ is kind of right in the middle of the continuum. The E, I am off the charts. From that, I have energy and passion are core to part of what my identity is. In articulating your personal brand, if you go through these three exercises, the blank sheet of paper, the input from other people when you email them, and then the personality frameworks and the personality tests, you bring that all together and you start to come up with some themes. They could be stories, they could be job titles, they could be traits, things that you aspire to and things that are unique to you. And then you can start to be ready to, to communicate those in terms of the keywords that show up on your about page, on your home page, in your podcast description, in the way you introduce yourself. You know, when people say, tell us a little bit about yourself, you got to have that ready. That is part of your personal brand. It's a really important part of your personal brand. If you're at a cocktail party and someone says, nice to meet you, what do you do? Boom. There's your chance to articulate your personal brand. Because in a way, when you do that, when somebody says, tell me a little bit about yourself, obviously you're describing, you know, you're answering the question, but you're also then potentially giving somebody else 
the answer to the when somebody says, well, I've never met him. Tell me about Dave Jackson. They might just parrot what you said when somebody said, tell me a little bit about yourself. Is that kind of the goal? That is the goal. Yeah. So what do you want the person to remember about you? Two things about our personal brands. We are complicated, complex human beings, right? We have many roles. So my personal brand includes me being a dedicated mother and someone who loves the outdoors and hiking. But if I'm being introduced on a podcast, I'm filtering that and I'm thinking about the audience and I'm thinking about the context and I'm thinking they need to know that I am a coach, that I am passionate, in fact, obsessed with communication and communication skills, and that I have a ton of energy. And those are the three things I want this audience to know about me. And, you know, in the back of my head, I've probably got five to 10 things that I, that I could bring up. So I filter those, those keywords and those ideas, those themes, and even those stories for the audience that I'm talking to. How does somebody mess up their personal brand? <laughs> There's a couple things. So one thing is being inconsistent. So it's really confusing and people will dismiss you if, you know, one moment you're talking about, for example, being righteous and having morals and whatever, and then you start dropping F-bombs and whatever, making comments that are quote unquote inappropriate. You really want to think about what you're saying and how you're saying it and making sure that it is consistent with that brand. That's one watch out. And another watch out is emulating people who you admire, but whose personal brand is probably irrelevant to yours. So it's okay to have heroes and it's okay to aspire and maybe even emulate other people. But I've heard of this happening to people, especially if they experience some kind of failure and they go, oh, okay, I'm not going to do that again. So what am I going to do? And then they look over at so-and-so sitting across the boardroom table and they're like, well, she does it this way. So that's what I'm going to do. And that's when people can end up in trouble. So, you know, you can imagine a lot of podcasters starting out their podcast and thinking, I want to be Tim Ferriss. Well, (laughs) chances are that's not your true core brand. And you need to think about what really, really makes your heart sing. What is unique about you that you can do better than anyone else. And and I've heard the saying recently, which I absolutely love, and it was, nobody can out Dave, Dave. <laughs> so what does that mean? You know what that well, means. I, well, I've always said for a while there, everybody was trying to be John Lee Dumas. <laughs> and I said, you're never going to out John Lee Dumas being John Lee Dumas because it comes to him very naturally. And I've seen people do this in some cases, and I, it's almost like they put on a, a persona. Exactly. You know, they they turn on the microphone, and all of a sudden it's like, "Hey, it's Jam and Dave Jackson. Welcome to the you know." And I'm like, and then they meet you at an event, and you don't go, "Hey, let's go get a beer." And they're like, "Wow, you sound completely different when you're just uh, yeah. you just you and you." In fact, that's one of the you're talking about compliments that make you kind of just go pitter patter. I, I think it was Jim Collison. Oh, I'm who's a co-host of mine. He said, you know, one of the cool things about you. And I said, what? And he goes, he goes in real life. You're just like you are on the mic. Oh. And to me, that's, that's the ultimate compliment to a, a podcaster. So yeah, I, I absolutely 100% agree. That means Dave, that you are authentic. And that is really important when your brand is your business. You personally are representing your brand in the school of podcasting. So it's it's different if you're going to work and you're managing a brand like Nike or Coca-Cola. I mean, you still want to be an authentic person, but that's not necessarily going to show up in your work. When you're a podcaster, if you can be authentic, it's going to be so much more powerful and it's going to resonate with your audience. It's also going to resonate with you. And here's the other thing. It's way easier for you to keep track of that because it's just natural. You don't have to try to remember what you said or what, you know, how you acted. It's just, you be you. What you're really doing is you're un- uncovering the, like you said, the qualities that you want to be por- portrayed in your brand, but also you're, you're kind of figuring out what comes to you naturally uh, and then saying, okay, great. How can I use my strengths to then portray whatever content you're trying to put forward in the podcast, which in theory you know, on at least on paper, okay, now I've 
develop content that's going to allow me to be me so I can deliver this content. And in theory, that should lead to a better episode. Is Am I on the right track? Absolutely. So, and a couple of things to, to just remind the listeners of is it's a combination of how you feel about yourself and also how other people perceive you. Both of those things are really important. And, and don't forget, they can change over time, but your core identity, you know, the archetype of your behavior and your values probably isn't going to change. You know, like I've always been the nerdy student who's outgoing. I have, and that hasn't changed and it won't change in the future. Well, how does that work for those that have imposter syndrome or that, that for me, you know, there are times I feel like I'm still the poor kid on the outside looking in or whatever demons you have in your own past. How do you come to grips with, in some cases, a not so great self-image, but you want to portray this confident, go get them kind of, you know, front? Well, you know what? We could do a whole episode on the imposter syndrome. I've actually been doing some research on it. It's absolutely fascinating. And to be honest, the discourse or the rhetoric about imposter syndrome has evolved, I would say, over the last 20 years, where it used to be something where how do you fight it? How do you manage it? And now it's actually, we all have it. Yeah. And we need to be putting ourselves in environments where we don't feel that as much and we need to embrace it. You know, just in terms of the imposter syndrome, I would say if you're not feeling it, then I would be probably more concerned than if you are feeling it. <laughs> but, but we all may feel inadequate or, you know, like I'm just starting out and, and, it, you know, it's, it's overwhelming, I guess is a way of putting it. I like to write one year plans and think about. So it's a, the good news is two and a half years ago, my podcast was a blank slate. What did I know? I know that I am obsessed. I am passionately obsessed with a topic of communication and I love teaching it. So that's really just what I focused on. That's even what I named my podcast. It's talk about talk. So put your stake in the ground and know that one thing, but then having a growth mindset at the same time so that, you know, as I was going along, I learned the flow of the podcast that made sense. I was getting compliments from listeners. Andrea, I love it how you start out with the interview and at the end, you summarize it in a way that makes it easy to remember. So, you, and then I realized, okay, I have this strength of synthesizing information and then representing it to my audience in a way that's easy for them to remember. And that works for them and that makes sense for me. So you'll learn a along the way what works. But I guess my advice is to, Think about what you love and what you know you're good at and what differentiates you from others and just stick your stake in the ground and go hard on it with a growth mindset. <laughs> yeah. And do you ever then with your own show come up with ideas and say that doesn't fit the brand? Oh, all the time. I had an opportunity recently to be on somebody else's podcast and he had listened to a podcast that I did on archetypes and the power of archetypes and how we can leverage them personally and professionally. And he said, I love that. And I would love to interview you about that. And then we started talking and his target audience was totally different from mine because, you know, my target, I'm very focused on ambitious executives. Those are the people that I'm targeting. I want to give people the secret weapon that's going to propel their career, which is improved communication skills. And he was talking to men who are going through a midlife crisis and mm -hmm. trying to develop stories and archetypes around their story. So archetypes were relevant there, but I was like, this is not a win for me. And it doesn't help my personal brand in any way of being a communication skills expert who's passionate about teaching these skills specifically to ambitious executives. So I was scared to do it. I felt very hesitant. But then after I did it, I was like, oh, I'm so proud of myself for doing that because I've protected my personal brand. If somebody somehow in my target audience heard that podcast, they'd be like, what? Why is she mm. talking to this guy about guys that are having midlife crises? You know? Yeah. Well, it's again, when you try to be everything to everyone, you kind of water things down. And um, I think it's Dan Miller. It says, if you confuse, you lose. So yeah. uh, if you try to be everything to everyone, you're nothing to everyone. Exactly. Okay. So now we've gone through our exercises. We've, we've kind of come up with an idea of what our personal brand is. How do I now, you know, the idea is to, we're going to influence what other people think about us 
when they're not, you know, when I'm not in the room. So how do I now say that to influence the audience? So this is a great question. And this is kind of the, the big step number two, how to communicate your personal brand. So what are the main sources or media across which we're communicating our personal brand? And so I was thinking in preparation for this interview, specifically for podcasters, I think there's three ways. There's the written words. It's what people read. There's auditory. So what people hear. And then there's visuals, what people see. And I I actually created a list of a whole bunch of things. So for example, for written words, it's start out right out of the gates, your podcast title, that's going to communicate something about your brand, your title. So are you a podcast coach or a communications coach? Or what are you calling yourself? There's, we talked about this, your keywords. So the words that you're going to show, that are going to show up in every bio about you, every about page about your podcast, every time you introduce yourself, those keywords, even things in writing. So what shows up on your website, what shows up on your social media pages, even your email signature. You and I were emailing a little bit back and forth. And I think your email signature, for a lot of people, there's a huge opportunity to communicate their personal brand in their email signature. And generally, I find people either kind of don't do anything at all, or it's just like a data dump with way too much there. Yes. Please don't send me the signature that's four paragraphs long. It's like you, your email is is two sentences and then your your signature is twice as long. I know. Long it's as so email. annoying. It's, like, it's comical, yeah. actually. It's comical. So my advice on that one is to think about what's the one thing you want people to do. So if yeah. you want them to sign up for your newsletter, put a link to your newsletter. If you want them to listen to your podcast, put that, like put one thing. That's That's my advice there. So that's how we articulate it. Does this mean I have to come up with a catchphrase to just repeat or how far down that rabbit hole do we go? Uh, Absolutely. A catchphrase is a great idea. If you can repeat consistently the same phrase that's consistent with your brand, that's consistent with you uh, and that people hear over and over again, it's eventually going to permeate their brains and they're going to get it. And that that's not to say that it can't change. So I, I say that similar to the way product brands change, you know, our favorite brands, they change their packaging, they change their logos. They sometimes even change their target markets. We as people obviously change too. Our environments change, technology changes. So we're allowed to change. Our taglines are allowed to change as well. But I think taglines are a really, a really smart way to communicate our personal brand. Um, Obviously, as podcasters, what we're communicating in terms of what people hear, so the auditory, the sound is is critical. So this would include things like the vocabulary that you use, the topics that you talk about, the music that you have at the beginning and the end and, and in transitions within your podcast, the quality of your audio. We were talking about this. If if you have horrible audio, that's saying something about you and about your podcast. And then there's, of course, as people who are in front of microphones, we have to think about the vocal elements. So rate, volume, articulation, pronunciation, fluency, pitch, all of those things are all implicitly often culminating in our personal brand. So hopefully, again, it's consistent with what we've been saying in, with the written words that are on the screen, and then also with the visuals, which is the third element. It's what people read, what people hear, and what people see. So for visual, the ones that come to mind for me are your headshot, your podcast cover art, your website aesthetics, including fonts, colors. It's called your you know, In branding, we call it your brand style guide. So choose two fonts and choose two colors and go with it. And so when people see it, they'll recognize Hey, this is the school of podcasting. You know, I recognize that emblem. I recognize the font. This is where I am. And then even how you dress, the brands that you associate yourself with, what microphone are you using? Can people see that? All of the brands that you consume that people see you consuming, they all become part of your brand as well. It's very meta. I was thinking as you said that, if you looked at my YouTube channel, which I don't do a ton on there, but if you looked at that two years ago, it was a hodgepodge of images and colors and fonts, and it just was a hot mess. And now 
my YouTube thumbnails all have the same color. They have the same logo. They have the same font. And it's still a bit of a hot mess, but it's, it's, it's a mildly warm mess now as opposed to a flaming hot mess because it's just more consistent. Yeah. Consistency and the more- is key, right? This is, this is, we learn this from product branding. You've got to be consistent if you're going to get the mess. So here's the thing. We're not in, as important to our consumers or in this case to our audience as we think we are. So they're not, they're not going to bed thinking about the school of podcasting and thinking about talk about talk. They're thinking about their own lives and they, they come across us. They're exposed to us. They hear about us if we're lucky. So we got to make sure those messages are consistent. So they start to recognize us. I said earlier about a catchphrase, but really when I think about it, it's not so much that you're trying to come up with where's the beef or I'm trying to think of of the latest catchphrase or whatever. (laughs) Do you have something you repeat? Because I thought about that. I'm like, what is my catchphrase? Well, I say things like it's not the tech. Here's the fun one. One of my quote, you know, catchphrases is not my catchphrase. I say all the time, Valerie Geller says, there's no such thing as too long, only too boring. And it's weird because I've said it so much that people keep attributing me to that. And I'm like, no, it's Valerie Geller. Do you have anything on your podcast that you say over and over that you might think would be a a catchphrase or something you're known for? Yeah, well, I have a few. One of the things that I say is we're all communicating all the time, sometimes purposefully, but mostly not. That's one thing that I say and people go, oh, you mean I'm thinking about that? I'm like, yes, you should be. Yeah. So I say that there's a couple things I say that, you know, show up in my podcast and on my website. Another thing that I like to say is that you can think of talk about talk as your secret weapon to help you get noticed for the right reasons and catapult your career. I like that. makes me want to listen. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't want a secret weapon? Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. One of the things I liked about this interview, and we've got a lot coming when we come back, we're going to have a really good question, is a lot of this getting to know yourself is actually in my planning your podcast course. So if you've ever worried about sounding stupid or not resonating with your audience or buying the wrong equipment, you don't have to worry about that at the School of Podcasting. You've got my step-by-step courses. You've got a phenomenal private Facebook group filled with brilliant podcasting minds, and you've got live group coaching. And of course, I'm always one email away, and I often respond with a video showing you exactly what to do. If you're ready to start your podcast, I am dying to help you. Go over to schoolofpodcasting.com slash join, use the coupon code LISTENER, and save on either a monthly or yearly package. Now, it's time for... Ooh, now that's a good question. Do you have any personal brands that you just look at and and kind of like somebody... I don't know who built that brand, but that is like a rock-solid personal brand. Ooh, that is a good question. Let me think. Well, I mean, the one that comes to mind as a classic personal brand that's been around for a long time and is very successful is Oprah Winfrey. That's true. I mean, we all know what we think about her when she's not in the room. And she, I believe, has got to be truly authentic. She's been around and the media is all over her and she really hasn't messed up. She is what she is. And she also has a story. So she has an archetype, the hero's journey of the woman that had the kind of brutal upbringing. And she finally got to host her own show in Chicago, I believe it was. And she, yeah. she like, well, against all odds, succeeded. And now she's helping other people, right? So she's got this beautiful story. It's consistent. And I would say that's an example of a fantastic personal brand. Well, and she's got some of the things you were talking about. She, they tried to turn her into Phil Donahue, who was this, you know, middle aged, white haired guy that had been on the air and it just ruled. Instead, they said, no, let Oprah be Oprah. Exactly. And the other, and the other thing that Oprah did, because for a while she was, it's like, hey, let's get sensationalism. Let's bring on some KKK guys and all sorts, some skinheads, whatever. And, she referred to her target audience as Susie Homemaker. So she knew exactly who her, her audience was. And when they pitched like, okay, we're going to bring a bunch of clans people on. She's like, no, Susie Homemaker doesn't care about those people. Mm, so beautiful. that's a great, I forget the name of the podcast 
but they did a whole thing on Oprah and how they actually interviewed Phil Donahue huh. and they were just saying how, number one, it was almost impossible for her to get hired. Yeah. And then the fact that she was a woman of color and here she is and she's talking to housewives and it was just, uh, yeah, that's a great example. That is, you know, what that is a, a great brand and still is a great brand. Yeah. When I see Oprah on something, if I see Oprah doing something on 60 Minutes, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. This must be a good story because they, they pulled Oprah for this. Yeah, so. exactly, exactly. So, and, and the thing about her brand is it, it's not only unique, it's also incredibly positive, right? It's inspiring for all of mm. us. So she really pulls us in. But, you know, as you were describing some of her story, I was thinking about some of the other top podcasters. They've all got unique personal brands, right? Like I, I think about some of the podcasters that I listen to, like Kara Swisher and Scott Galloway on The Pivot. My goodness, their personalities come through like unbelievable. And I know exactly what to expect from them. I would know how to describe them if they weren't, well, when they're not in the room, certainly. Tim Ferriss and Seth Godin, we know what these people represent. And oftentimes now, a lot of the superpower billionaire CEOs are also personal brands. Think about Elon Musk. Talk about a personal brand. That guy's oozing yeah. personal brand. <laughs> Well, you said you've been doing your podcast now for a couple of years. Yeah. What inspired you to to start your podcast? So I was consulting, doing uh, mostly marketing and branding consulting. And I realized that I really missed teaching and coaching people. I, I wouldn't have... At that time, I wouldn't have called it coaching. I just would have said I really missed teaching. And then I had an opportunity to start this podcast. And I had this idea of three steps to go through. So the first step is build your content. The second step is grow your audience. And the third step is drive your revenue. And I knew in the back of my head that the revenue would be from coaching and teaching. So doing corporate workshops, doing one-on-one coaching and all that kind of stuff. But before that can happen, I need to develop content and then grow my audience. So I just I started having a weekly email newsletter and podcast. And now I'm bi-weekly podcast because I'm shifting gears to growing my audience and revenue generation. But that model really, really worked well for me. And I'm finding that a lot of the content and specifically the interviews that I did where I was interviewing experts in various communication topics is now fueling the corporate workshops and the one-on-one coaching that I'm doing. So it's become like an ecosystem. And if I'm finding that I need to do some research for a corporate workshop or something like that, then I'll go and do the research and I'll first publish it as a podcast. And so I'm, I'm repurposing a lot of my content and I'm just, I'm really in my happy place now. I'm loving it. It's, uh, it's so much fun. And do you have any lovely because of my podcast stories? Oh gosh. Uh, well, because of my podcast, I think I was granted some nice contracts from companies to do corporate workshops of for executives all around the world. That would not have happened if I hadn't done my podcast. And I've made so many fantastic friends. I have to say the podcasting community is... This is like the icing on the cake. I didn't start podcasting and join this community because I thought I'd make friends. But you know, literally today, I was emailing with two women who I'm, I've met through podcasting and we've become friends. It's like, oh, this is amazing. You mentioned that part of your personal brand is kind of how maybe your title... And I've always struggled because I don't know the connotations. And I don't know if you can answer this. What is the difference between a coach, a mentor, and a consultant? Ooh. Okay. So (laughs) I'll tell you what I think. And I, I know these terms can be a little bit messy and they definitely overlap with each other. Of those terms, I would say if I had to choose for you and probably for me, I would choose the term coach. Here's the thing I know about being a coach. A coach is on your side, but a coach knows more than you and has expertise to share with you. The other thing I know about coaching is that 10 years ago, people who needed remedial help, people who were behind hired coaches. Fast forward to 2020 and 2021, the most successful, ambitious people on the planet all have coaches. Full stop. I was told that recently when I was trying to get hired at a firm to do some corporate workshops. And they said, well, all of our senior executives 
have coaches that coach them through all this stuff anyway. So you'd be doing the middle level. And I was like, wow, that is amazing. They all have their own personal coach. You got to understand that you're treading in, in sort of a common territory here with coaching, but it is hot and it is people at all stages of their careers now are hiring coaches. I have a bit of a different perspective on the term mentor because I've been doing some, some coaching on networking and who you should have in your network, right? And so people are saying that you should have a sponsor in your network. So someone who's going to bring you up. And then you should also have a mentor and a mentor is someone who is there a hundred percent for you that you share everything with the good, the bad, and the ugly, and that is going to support you. And they may not know more than you. They, they could even be a peer, but a mentor is someone who supports you. They, so I don't, I don't think mentor is really the right term for you and me, Dave, but, and then a consultant, I think of as a little bit less personal. It's more business, maybe B2B business to business. It's more transactional. You could come and do some consulting to me on my business, but I would rather that you came and coached me on my business. Here's a fun question. Talkabouttalk.com. You've been doing it for two years. I want to send my audience to your site to listen to one episode that is a great representation of your podcast. What episode should I send them to? Oh boy. I would send them to Communicating with Confidence, the four P's of mentally preparing. Because? Because I'm really proud of the way I did what I said before. Maybe, maybe this may be my superpower. I, I take information from various sources and then I synthesize it in a way that's really actionable and easy to remember for my audience. So I created this four P's framework that people can use anytime they are nervous about going out on stage or, you know, pressing record on the microphone for the first time or going on a first date, whatever that reason is where you, you're anticipating feeling that shot of adrenaline, this episode will equip you with a framework that I promise will help you. And when I've given workshops on this topic, I get repeats. I get asked to do it again. And it's also one of my most downloaded episodes. So I think the topic really resonates with people. All right. And we will have a link to that out in the show notes. So thanks to COVID, I haven't had a haircut in a year and tend to look a little bit like Jerry Garcia. So is it time to get a haircut or can I pull off the uh, slightly cool, maybe I need a, a corduroy jacket with some elbow pads. Do you think I could pull that? Can I, can I weave that into my, my personal brand? Well, I would leave the corduroy jacket with the, you know, the patched elbows um, okay. at home or for somebody pipe. else, Dave, personally. But, you know, one thing that I really appreciate about your podcast and about how you talk and your, your authenticity is how honest and I, you know, it's verging on self-deprecation, but you're, you're not quite that bad. You, you, you're very humble, you're modest and you're very open. So I think talking about your hair would be, hilarious. Like, I, I think you should be mentioning it. You could even <laughs> post something on social media. Here I was before COVID. Here I am now. What do you think? Should I get a haircut or should I, you know, put it in a ponytail and call it the new me? Well, Andrea, thank you so much for coming on the show. If you could see the page in front of me, I have a ton of notes here. Uh, I'm definitely going to go over and check out that episode you mentioned. You can find all of our episodes over at talkabouttalk.com. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much, Dave. It was really a blast and a privilege to be on your show. And I hope someday that I can interview you on Talk About Talk, where you can talk about communication skills that you've learned through your years at the School of Podcasting. You know me, it's, it, you don't have to twist my arm too hard to, <laughs> to come talk. So. Done. All right. Oh, so much chocolatey goodness. I think my favorite word out of this whole interview is resonate. It reminds me when I had a band in the basement, I was whatever, 16, and we decided to tune our guitars and everything down a half step, which means we went from E to E flat for anyone taking notes at home. And we found out that my house resonates on E flat. In other words, we would hit a chord and literally the whole house would like just vibrate. It'd be like, it was crazy. So when I think about that, that's what you want to do with your audience. You just want to have content that makes them go, oh my gosh, did you hear that podcast? 
And this has so much great steps, homework and things like that. If you go out to schoolofpodcasting.com slash 765, I actually made a little workbook that you can sign up and download that will kind of walk you through all those steps. I think the other reason I really enjoyed this topic is I'm actually going through a bit of a personal branding, I don't know if you would call it a crisis, but I mentioned earlier that I'm redoing the School of Podcasting, and part of it was when you logged in and you took the Planning Your Podcast course, one of the videos, my hair is actually almost black. Right now, it's pretty much gray. The only thing left on me right now, well, I shouldn't, let's not go too too detailed here. The only thing that hasn't turned gray on my face is I have a Charlie Chaplin mustache that's still black. That's driving me bonkers. I actually want to go buy some gray hair dye. But the Planning Your Podcast course had a video, still does at this point, that is square. It's not 16 by 9. My hair is kind of salt and pepper. And if you think about that first impression, now the content in there is great. It's still very, very valuable. But that first impression of like, oh, he's kind of grainy and what's he doesn't look like that anymore. And that's the other thing I thought I would mention here. Sometimes we put off starting things that we shouldn't put off because we don't think we are where we need to be to do that. And so I was actually thinking about this, like if I record a bunch of videos now, my hair is super long and I'm probably, maybe, haven't really figured it out yet, going to cut my hair eventually. And is that going to ruin this if later I cut my hair and I don't look like me? You know, sometimes we overthink things. We do. And I was just like, sometimes you just got to start where you are. And later, if I go, yeah, I think I look, I think that Jerry Garcia look wasn't a good look for my videos. I can just reshoot them. Things are not statues often. They're recipes and you can fix them later. So I hope you enjoy this. In the future, I have been so blessed to have really great interviews. Andrea was a great interview, and I'm going to be interviewing Kristen. Actually, I've already interviewed her from YesBossVA.com. She is a podcast booker, and I realize that you're probably sitting there thinking, oh, how do I get booked on a podcast? And what was great about Kristen is here's somebody who really kind of wants you. She wants uh, you to hire her to help you get on podcast, but yet she shared some insane secrets because she realized not everybody is going to hire her. And when you actually hear the work it takes to get on a podcast, you're going to go, yeah, I could do that. Or I could just hire Kristen, but some really great insights into how do I get booked on a podcast? So that's coming in the future as well as anything you would like to talk about. You can always contact me at school slash contact. Don't forget about the question of the month. What do you wish you had known when you first started podcasting? That's at school slash question and everything you want about me, episodes, contact gear guides, everything there. If you want to, if you need somebody to edit your audio, got that. It's all there schoolofpodcasting.com. Until next week, take care. God bless. Class is dismissed. And here comes about an hour of bloopers. Holy cow. What do you wish you had known when you first started podcasting? That's at schoolofpodcasting.com slash questions. In fact, everything, and it's just with a uh, crap. I was so close. It's not questions. It's question. Uh, talk about talk.com. Andrea Wojnicki. I, you know, I just can't say your name. Uh, it's painful. I don't know why. Andrea from, uh, you know what? We're just going to do the whole thing. I'm not even going to attempt your last name. Is that offensive? Because for some reason, I'm thinking about it so hard that when I go to say watch Nikki, I can't say watch Nikki when I'm actually when it counts. So (laughs) I'll just say Andrea from Talk About Talk, which is what just what I normally do because I'm a big coward and I don't like big words. Um, this is where Dave has to come up with another question. What's his name? (laughs) Rogan. (laughs) Seth Godin. Seth Godin. Sorry. And if that's an old story, there's a really good chance that I should have referred to her. Why can I talk today? I just can't talk. My mouth has gone home already. 
you know, you know, awesome. Right. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. But that was, that was perfect. 